Now, WBOC News at 6, Delmarva's News Leader. The old Labanol building in Salisbury is finally off the market. Real estate development company DevReco announced its purchase of that vacant lot this morning and says it has big plans for that space. Good evening to you. I'm Todd Carley. Paul Butler is on assignment. Tonight. And I'm Steve Hammond. Welcome to WBOC News at 6. The old Labanol building in Salisbury has been vacant for almost a year now, but not for long. Development real estate company DevReco announced the purchase of the building today. WBOC's Nicole Lauren got a look inside the vacant space to see what changes are going to be made and how it will impact the community. The lights are on at the former Labanol plant in no one's home just yet. But after Deverco's recent $2.3 million purchase, this entire building is going to be restored. Deverco's Brad Gillis says this 160,000 square foot space has so much potential they couldn't let it sit on the market. So it's our job as developers to, to repurpose, re-energize, and uh, essentially reinvigorate new life into the building. Gillis says the building will most likely not be a single user. We can expect to see several different storefronts and extra parking. He also says what kind of tenants could soon take over the vacant space. Picture uh, office warehouse, uh, flex space. Uh, picture um, uh, someone that is uh, either a light manufacturer or someone that is an, an office user. Uh, that's, that's the goal with this. I mean, really to leverage the community needs. Gillis says this purchase is about bringing opportunity to not just Salisbury, but all of Wicomico County. And County Council President John Cannon says he's happy to see someone taking a chance to make a change. As a county, we do everything we can to enhance the infrastructure and to create the framework for economic development, but we need leaders in the community, such as Deverco, to come forward and actually take that leap of faith and make things happen. Gillis says the foundation of the building is in great shape, which gives them a lot to work with as they look for ways to make this building come to life once again. Deverco says they hope to see the entire project finished in five years. In Wicomico County, I'm Nicole Lorne, WBC News. The governor of Delaware calls it a, quote, tough sell, but a necessary strategy. Today, John Carney unveiled his plan to help Delaware dig out of a $385 million budget shortfall. But as WBOC's Kent County Bureau Chief Tom Lehman reports, some of his tax proposals might cost some people more than others. Governor Carney unveiled his new budget proposal to lawmakers today here in the state's capital. And while the proposal itself does include some changes like funding cuts in some state agencies, it also is going to make things more expensive for some people, depending on how much they make and whether they smoke. Buying cigarettes would cost another dollar per pack. You're paying more for a pack of cigarettes than you are a gallon of milk. You know, like it's, it's crazy. Carney says Delaware should also cut 4.5% from state agencies' discretionary funding and eliminate 200 vacant state jobs. The state would also raise personal income tax rates by a little bit in each bracket, with the highest earners paying 6.8%. People that, that are in the higher bracket, they probably can't afford it, you know. Itemized tax deductions in Delaware would also be eliminated in favor of raising the standard deduction by 50%. Governor Carney's budget proposal to lawmakers here at Legislative Hall will also include $4.7 million in additional hazardous duty pay funding to correctional officers in light of the hostage situation at the Vaughn Correctional Center near Smyrna. However, some union leaders say they don't believe that the move goes far enough when it comes to officer retention. Still, even with roughly $37 million being cut in state funding for school districts, some people say the state still needs to tread light with taxpayer money. It's not a good thing to waste money, especially if everyone's paying for it. Delaware would also save more than $6 million by chipping in a smaller portion to the cost of state employee health care. Carney's budget proposal won't be coming in the form of legislation since one was already proposed by Governor Markell before Carney took office. Carney is expected to try and sell the ideas in his budget to lawmakers to a certain degree during an address he's going to give to the legislature next week. Reporting in Kent County, I'm Tom Lehman, WBOC News, Dover. An overnight fire has left a Wicomico County chicken house in ruins. This was the scene late this morning in the 5000 block of Powellville Road. State Fire Marshal's office says it broke out about 1230 this morning and it took firefighters about 90 minutes to get it under control. A neighbor spotted the flames and ran to help. Get up. Assume that I, I know roughly the vicinity. Peek out the back window. Sure enough, there's 
you know, there's a fire in the chicken house. I'd say that that's that gentleman's business. I mean, he's a he's a chicken farmer by by trade, so it, he certainly he doesn't benefit by losing a house. That's for sure. No word yet how many chickens were lost in that fire. The good news is nobody was hurt. The state fire marshal's office estimating about two hundred and thirty thousand dollars in damage was done to that chicken house in Wicomico County. Well, today marked a highly anticipated groundbreaking on a new school in Sussex County. The new H.O. Brittingham Elementary School in Milton will be built on Mulberry Street right behind the current school. Actual construction began in January. The current building is 51 years old and can hold 550 students. The new building will be able to fit 720 students. There's so many enhancements that um, everyone who has seen the design, it's been nothing but positive and they're excited for it. The kids are excited, the, the community's excited, and when we've gone to town meetings, I mean, there's a great buzz around the Cape community for this facility. And also excitement because there's people anticipating the next few that have already been approved. The new school is expected to open in the fall of 2018. At that point, renovations will begin on Milton Elementary and students from that school will use the old HOB building. Well, this is a very memorable day here on Delmarva. No doubt many of you have watched <laughs> this guy sitting next to me for a lot of years report the news here at WBOC. Well, it's been 30 years to be precise. Mm -hmm. 30 years ago today, Steve Hammond began his illustrious career at WBOC and we're going to spend some time tonight in this broadcast honoring your legacy. Well, illustrious. Thank you. <laughs> and to help us do that, here's a live look. We have invited Steve's family and friends who will join us as we take a look back at his long award-winning career in journalism. And we begin tonight with two people who have shared the anchor desk with Steve, Alice Bavis, who was a longtime anchor here, and Paul Butler, who normally sits right here at six, but he is on assignment tonight. Take a look. Hey Steve, I wish I could be there, sir, but I'm out on assignment tonight hosting an event. But folks, I just want to say this. I've been sitting beside this gentleman for the last six years in the six o'clock news. And just what a consummate gentleman Mr. Hammond is. Mr. WBOC, we call him. And Steve, just want to say congratulations on 30 years. And it's been an honor to sit beside you. Steve was an awesome mentor. I always felt like Delmarva was lucky that Steve decided to live here and work at WBOC for the time that he did. 